Thomas Baldrick here with Thrombosis.tv coverage of the ISTH conference in Toronto and joined now by Dr. Charlie Pollock, the newest member of the Thomas Jefferson University Hospital staff in Philadelphia, PA. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. So uh, you've probably got the, the, the drug with the longest name, the whole <laughs> conference associated with you. What was the Idarucizumab study? And uh, can you give us a background about it? Well, the Adarizizumab study is called Reverse AD, which stands for the reversal of active dabigatran by this drug, Adarizizumab. Uh, and we looked at patients who are taking dabigatran who present emergently with life-threatening or serious bleeding that the clinician on the scene at the bedside thinks warrants reversal, uh, or patients who are taking dabigatran who have an urgent or emergent need for surgery or some other sharp intervention where the operator is uncomfortable doing the procedure without reversing the anticoagulation first. So dabigatran has been out for a while now. It was the first of the so-called NOACs or DOACs to be approved. Adarucizumab is a specific reversal agent that was developed uh, to work only against dabigatran. It's a fully humanized mouse uh, antibody fab fragment. And uh, it's been shown in preclinical studies, human volunteers, normal healthy human volunteers, but also older human volunteers, uh, volunteers with diminished renal function uh, and in a number of animal models, particularly animal trauma, it's been shown to very effectively reduce and then reverse the anticoagulant effect of dabigatran within minutes. So we had a very strong preclinical platform to pursue this. The reverse AD study, we presented the interim analysis of the first 90 patients here at ISTH, published uh, today also in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, we, we got the first look in, in bleeding patients. Uh, at how a reversal agent might work. And the long and the short of it is it works pretty well. What stands out most in your data? These bleeding complications are rare. We, we know that the, the, the NOACs as a class uh, present with fewer bleeding complications than does warfarin, but they, they still occur. They tend to occur in older people who are taking these drugs for atrial fibrillation, so they tend to have multiple comorbidities, often reduced renal function. So basically, the picture I'm trying to paint for you is we're looking at some pretty sick patients with an acute insult, either bleeding badly in front of you or a head bleed, or they are not bleeding, but they've got a surgical emergency. So this is a pretty sick population of patients. And what stands out is the immediacy of the effect of idarucizumab in terms of reversing the effect of dabigatran literally within minutes and then keeping it reversed after 24 hours. So what that does is it removes anticoagulation from the treating clinician's list of concerns for that patient. I'm an ER doc. If, if I've got a patient who's, uh, say, a 75-year-old uh, who's got atrial fibrillation taking dabigatran, wrecks his car on the expressway, that patient comes in hemodynamically unstable, maybe he's got a bleed in his head, bleed in his chest, bleed in his abdomen, bleed in his pelvis, bad, bad situation. The first thing that jumps out to me is, my gosh, he's anticoagulated, it's going to make it even worse. So if I can take the anticoagulation away, by reversing it so effectively, so predictably, then I've still got lots of other problems. He's got bleeds everywhere, he's got holes in places that I need to patch and may need to go to the operating room to fix. But I take that, that really primal concern that we have about the severity of the situation off the table. What's next with idarucizumab? Well, this is an interim analysis, the first 90 patients. We're going to enroll 300 patients worldwide. So the first and uh, most important priority is to, uh, to finish the study. Uh, the, the drug has also been submitted already to the FDA and the EMA, the regulatory agencies in the U.S. and, and Europe, uh, because in the U.S. the drug was given this very special status of breakthrough therapy designation. Uh, and so it's being considered fairly early. I don't know what the timetable is for that. We're going to continue the study until the end regardless. But uh, I think on both the regulatory front and the research front, we'll move forward with this drug. If approved, the impact seems like it could be significant. It would certainly be significant for that population of patients taking dabigatran. Now again, we know from large studies like the RELY study that got dabigatran to market in the first place that these types of bleeding or surgical emergencies don't happen very often, probably in the order of one to one and a half percent per year. But when they do happen, it's a very uh, you know, challenging and, and complex clinical scenario. This drug could make that a lot more simple. Very good. Dr. Pollock, thanks for joining us. Good luck in the new gig at Thomas Jefferson. Thank you very much. Okay.